Hi, this is my personal reflection for Hot and Throbbing by Paula Vogel. Um, this is a play that my group and I read. Um, and it's kind of short, it was only one act. Um, one set, one scene, it's just really, really short. I personally don't think that it was long enough to develop all the themes and stuff like that that it meant to. It was talking about um, domestic violence and abuse. Um, and even though we saw that in the play, I don't think that it really developed the theme very well. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, one thing at the beginning of the play in the set description, it tells you not to trust anything that happens in the red light. And so going into the play, it's like, okay, well, what's the red light? Like, I don't know. Um, but throughout the play, it switches from red light to normal light, red light to normal light. And the red light is kind of what's happening in the character's like subconscious almost. And the main character, Charlene, is actually writing a adult entertainment like movie type thing. And the red light is almost mimicking what she's writing. Um, I think this really actually relates to Sigmund Freud's idea of the ID, the ego, and the superego. Because he talks about it kind of like you have what society wants you to do. You have what you want to do, and then you kind of have your inner, inner like sexual desires. And I think that the red light um, might signify or exemplify that part of it. Um, that it's kind of like there's sexual desires coming out. Um, that could also just be due to Charlene's writing. Um, but also another theme that is really prevalent in, in the novel is male dominance. Um, you see it with Charlene and Clyde, who is her ex-husband, um, who abused her and was an alcoholic and stuff like that. And she really just falls victim to him, to his power um, and his grasp over her once again when he barges into their house. Um, and then, but you then you get the children who are Calvin and Leslie Ann, and Leslie Ann has no clue about the abuse, about what her father has done, or anything like that. Um, but Calvin saw it one time, so he knows exactly what what the deal is. But um, another aspect of the book is the voice and the voiceover, which are actually like the subconscious of um, of Charlene and Clyde. And so throughout the book, when the red light switches, so does so do some of the voices, so you would get kind of Charlene talking, and then the voice talking, and Clyde talking, and the voice over, and it really just gets confusing. I think that, or I thought that maybe if you were to see it as a play instead of reading it, that it might be better, that you might be able to understand it more, but I've read some reviews of it, and it really, people have just said that it's kind of like a jumble or a hot mess, or something like that, and that it's just not executed very well. I think Vogel's intentions were great, like I think that um, domestic abuse is something that really needs to be addressed, um, and she says that it happens, or her time was at, in the past, the present, and the future, because it always has happened and it always will happen, and it definitely needs to be something that America talks about, but I don't feel like it should be in this way, like I really don't think that this was effective at portraying that because it doesn't really bring you to any conclusion. It doesn't bring you to a conclusion that's bad or that's like, we should change it this way or change it that way. It just kind of leaves you with, oh, I just read this play about domestic abuse. And then, oh, it's kind of weird. Like, what? Um, yeah, and I just don't find it effective for that purpose. Um, overall, I wish I could read it over and over again until I understand everything. Like. The significance of Moby Dick, which is brought up um, multiple times during the novel, and not only is it brought up, but it's also quoted. Um, having not read Moby Dick, I don't fully understand the symbolism of it, but it's also referenced at the end, um, which is kind of like a flash forward um, to Leslie Ann when she's older, and she's teaching and brings up Moby Dick and then hears um, the voiceover of her mom, and it kind of brings tears to her eyes or something like that. And I think that it would just take a lot more to understand that. And I wish I could really sit down with Vogel and see what she was thinking when she wrote this or like kind of walk it out with her, right? Because I think that would be more effective. Overall, I like it. Um, I wish, kind of wish that we would have read How I Learned to Drive by Vogel instead because that one has really good reviews. But I think this is a good um, play to have read and to un have understood somewhat. Um, and I'm glad that we got to 
read it in a group so that we can kind of bounce ideas off of each other and stuff like that. Thank you.